بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Dear respected viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin and to all of those who will be watching later on our YouTube channel and Facebook page It is broadcasted live from the studio of Channel S watched on Sky 814 across the UK and the Europe Last week we have discussed about love for fame and authority and it is a continuation but in a different angle and in, in our tonight's discussion we'll be discussing on the topic human desires. We'll look into what are the symptoms, we'll look into the, um, the, what are the symptoms of human desire, we'll look into is it good to have certain um, desire for us to um, engage and motivate us in our life or all desires are harmful when it comes to the spiritual matter or even in this regard worldly matter. All of this and many more inshallah we'll be discussing in our tonight's episode and to discuss this topic we have with us a very renowned scholar who is a graduate from Al-Azhar University who is the respected Imam and Khatib of the famously known mosque which is the London Central Mosque and Islamic uh, Centre which is famously known as Regent's Park Mosque, Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for joining with us and welcome to the program. Barakallahu alaikum. Thank you very much. Um, just to continue, um, I want to briefly touch on, because I understand we have touched upon last week, an element of this topic. Now, just to touch upon in our tonight's topic, which is human desires. Mm -hmm. Now, as a human, it's quite natural for every human to have some sort of desire. Now, some might classify it to be good, other might classify it to be bad. Now, it depends on what perspective we're looking from and at what angle we're com from what angle are we coming from. Now, in general, what does Islam say about human desire? Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi hamdan yuafi ni'amah wa yukafi wa mazidah. Subhanak Allahumma la nuhsi thana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. After praising Allah and sending salam and salutations to our holy prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and he has no partners. And I also testify that the holy prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the final messenger and slave of Allah the Almighty. Now, um, desire, uh, it is worth or it is important that we understand the word desire in English. Um, it says a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. A strong, de a strong feeling of wanting to have um, something or wishing for something to happen. This is what we understand uh, from the word desire in English. Um, now, um, uh, the desires uh, can be in different things. There are different types of desires. Uh, there can be carnal desire, which is uh, the physical desire, or maybe we can say more specifically sexual desire, uh, to do with eating, consuming, or having relationship with opposite um, genders. Just, just a quick add on that. When you say uh, desire, because normally there are two elements, so a spiritual side of it and physical side. When you say physical, it, it considers the aspect of physiological, psychological, yes. a lot of other elements takes into so, so context. So there can be like desire which relate to the physical desire. Mm -hmm. So something that a, a body wants to enjoy. Okay. And also there can be desire which is related to ideology, thoughts, beliefs, Akida and so on and so forth. So people may have desires in other forms. Um, so there can be different types of desires, but we're talking generally uh, about the desires. Now, are all the desires disliked in Islam? That can be a question. Uh, not all the desires are disliked. Not all the desires are, 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 are abhorred in Islam. There can be desires which, which is praiseworthy, like um, that you desire to establish salah at your home. You desire to see your children are uh, obedience. This is a desire and that, that, that's praiseworthy. So desires can be praiseworthy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Noble Quran, uh, that in Jannah in heaven, uh, the, the believers will have what their hearts desire and what their eyes or what will please their eyes. So that shows not all the desires are bad, but there, then there can be desires which are disliked and prohibited to, uh, to some extent. And Islam doesn't support a desire which is 
free, or which is far from the teachings or instruction of Allah and his messenger, uh, or messengers, peace be upon all of them. So uh, not all the desires are disliked, as we said, of um, And then there are desires which are obviously disliked and, and prohibited in Islam. So just to understand a bit more, so it's like a usage of knife. Mm -hmm. uh, so the usage of knife does not consider it to be haram and halal, but it's how and when it's used. If it falls in the hand of a doctor, mm -hmm. he saves life. Mm -hmm. If it falls in the hand of a wrong person, yes, yes. he might take life. Yes, yes. So it's right. so the desire itself. It has to be controlled by the correct teachings, uh, um, the correct instruction. Okay. Otherwise, people can misuse or abuse the desire. Now, generally, um, desires of human beings, <coughs> uh, if we tend to follow the carnal desire or all ty or other types of desires, then we tend to make a lot of mistakes because as human beings. We are weak and we tend to follow our nafs, our shahwa, our desires. Now desire, the word desire can be found in Arabic language as well. So there is a word called ashahwa in mm -hmm. Arabic. Ashahwa, uh, as the scholars of Arabic language they define the word shahwa, they say arraqba fi shay wa hubbu. Again, like uh, a, a, a strong feeling towards something. That's what is shahwa. Um, so the word shahwa is also directly mentioned in the Quran as well. Yes, yes, yes. As I said, وفيها ما تشتهي. That word تشتهي came from shahwa. What about زيون الناس حب الشهوات? Shahwa, exactly. زيون الناس حب الشهوات. That um, uh, the, the love for the desires have been adorned mm. and, and, and made beautiful or beautified mm. for the people in this world. Also, uh, there's another word for desire in Arabic language, which, which is alaza. And we said, وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنْفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ So that word ladha is also quite uh, common in, in, uh, in Bengali language, in Urdu, ladha, we say. Mm -hmm. So ladha is, is again taste and... and, and it enjoy. comes more to food that yeah. we normally know. Exactly, yeah. And then you have the last word, or maybe one of the most famous common words in Arabic language, is called hawa. Hawa, again, um, as the scholars of Arabic language, they say, مَحَبَّةُ الْإِنسَانِ الشَّيْءِ وَغَلَبَتُهُ عَلَى قَلْبِهِ Excessive love, extreme love, and then uh, this dominate the dominate the hearts of people so it becomes it overwhelms the hearts so it, it kind of uh, empower and becomes stronger than the, uh, uh, in, in people's hearts uh, ibn faris a scholar of arabic language called ibn faris uh, he said that uh, what the word hawa is mostly used for um, something that is free or far from good so it's it's more it's more like uh, doing uh, or, or t a tendency towards bad things or doing things which is not um, religiously allowed or permitted. So this is Ibn Faris. He said the word Hawa. Now we find in the Holy Quran repeatedly mentioned in in many many verses, in numerous verses, to not follow our desires just because we want to enjoy and we want to be free in this world and we want to live as we wish like some people say many people say in this world at this time that we want to just enjoy this is my life this is my choice were you who are you to say who are you to advise and therefore some people even say there's nothing called good advice or bad advice it's just that what you want to what you feel like there's, doing. A, there's a famous saying there's nothing called as good or bad it's just what the thinking makes it see subhanallah now if that was the case, then Allah the Almighty wouldn't send uncountable messengers to this world. One of the reasons for the Anbiya, starting from Sayyidina Adam up to Muhammad alayhi salam, uh, the reason for them, for these Anbiya to come to this world was because to guide people and to tell us what is good, what is right and what is wrong. And um, I must mention like, when we see like uh, the people who make a lot of research and the tr they want to learn through a hard way or like you know, the academic research yeah like difficult ways so some people they come up with, with certain uh, rules and regulations or some laws and then they tend to say oh that was ta or that was uh, proven to be a mistake and and we see that this need to be changed and we see a lot of mistakes are happening a lot of crimes are taking place in the society mm -hmm. and then then they change and they they bring a new law but if people were to be satisfied with the divine laws, then they, would, they wouldn't go through this frustration and they wouldn't go through this difficult no. 
transitions. That's very true. Mm. But then again, it's understandable fairly on a Muslim land in Muslim countries. But when we live in a country where a lot of people, they might not have subscribed to any particular faith. Yeah. So they might feel that we might be forced upon to follow a certain religious aspect. This is the reason why we say we don't mean to suggest Islam only. If people follow one of the uh, mainstream faiths, especially um, the faith that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't tend to have a lot of common agreements. There's a lot of similarities. So in other words, the country that's the majority uh, people follows a particular faith. If that yeah. country's um, religion is to be implemented in a better, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an understanding that people can get a betterment from that, is yes, that what you're yes, suggesting? Uh, the, what I want to say that whatever was brought by the prophets and messengers to mm. this world was for good and beneficial mm. for the mm. human beings. <laughs> Otherwise, people will maybe find out, but they will go through a lot of difficulties. <laughs> they will make laws, rules and regulations, then they will say, oh, that was a mistake, that was proven to be Correct. wrong. A lot of mistake, uh, crimes are taking place. Now we need to change that law. Now, part of it is also, we just have to be balanced on this mm -hmm. approach. Part mm -hmm. of it is some people, they look at the followers and the leaders of a particular faith, and when they see them committing some sort of heinous mistake. crime, which some even not ever dare to think about, yeah. they tend to lose their faith or hope and uh, some sort of belief in the religion that they follow. This is the reason why normally we say, even when someone comes to convert to Islam, we say that always put the faith faith of Islam, Muslims above their actions. So we, as human beings, we can make mistakes. Even the a'imma, imams, are not uh, infallible. They can make mistakes. And in our aqidah, that uh, apart from prophets uh, and, and, and uh, that like every, a, 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 anyone can make mistakes. So, anbiya uh, alayhi they're the ma'asum. Like they, they are infallible, uh, they're infallible, they don't make mistakes. So now, um, we people as human beings, we can make mistakes. And this is the reason why we have to say that uh, Islam is above the actions of Muslims. And that doesn't mean that we also don't put, uh, make ourselves better. And, and, and uh, we, uh, we take the character of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in every aspect of our life. So in other words, Muslim, the Islam should not be judged upon the Muslim that are prevalent in the society, that's, but that's rather by its true say. scriptures. Yes, yes, yes. And you will find good and bad people in every faith, in every every tribe, every uh, every sect as well. That's very true. And I think it's, again, it uh, applies to the uh, the worldly matters as well. Mm. If a doctor has been involved in some illegal means that and mean method, that means all doctors are So corrupt. we can't be paranoid. Even the textbooks. Yes. We can't blame the yes. textbooks for that. Absolutely correct. We can't be paranoid. We, ca we can't just generalize. And this is something really important. Now, going back to the issue of uh, al-hawa, the word hawa, which is more, mostly goes towards the bad desires or desires which are harmful. Like, for example, someone when a, someone feels like drinking alcohol and then he drinks and drinks until he becomes, he goes uh, unconscious and he, he loses his, his sense. Now, that's a desire. He wants to do it, but that's harmful. What um, about uh, earning, earning excessive money? Uh, uh, excessive money, uh, ex uh, wasting money, or maybe mm. uh, take the issue of drugs. Those who uh, want to have or consume drugs, they really love doing it, and it's something that they want, the the zeal and desire. But but it's harmful. Um, for, I mean, just to correct, uh, I mean to to understand it better. When I say excessive money, it means like running after the. Uh, the money, like if I have ventured in yes, one project, yes. I'm continuously, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, continuously yes. running after it, rather yes. not being content with what or we're connecting with. oneself with money. Money, that's what it is. Because money is something that we need. We need to be to to be um, successful and to be productive in this world, and that's that's something needed. And uh, even Al Quran Al Karim says, "فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشر في الأرض." If salah has been performed, go out and seek sustenance. Earn, don't just stay home. So go and earn. The sustenance. This is a Quranic state uh, 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 injunction. And this is another thing. Many Muslims, even unfortunately, we think and we see that as someone who is a leader of a faith or an imam of a faith, we think that they normally would be poor or financially would not be quite. Uh, this is a enough. negative, um, yes, uh, meaning that always religious people have been taken or portrayed as people of the low. You That's know, class true. people of the society of financially not stable in that context. Again, so this is something. Um, but there is no was, restriction in Islam. No, 
no, no. Uh, in fact, if the mal uh, comes and if someone can use it in the right way, halal sauce. then, you know, uh, this is something best. And, and many of our Sahaba, they were, they, they were very rich. Yes. And so um, the, the wealth is, is praiseworthy as long as it's, it's, it's spent in the right way, in correct way. And earned in halal. In, so in halal way, yes. It. So now going back to um, the issue of al-hawa or desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, in verse 77, He said, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا الْهَوَىٰ ولا تتبعوا سوري ولا تتبعوا اهواء قوم قد ضلوا من قبل واضلوا كثيرا وضلوا عن سواء السبيل so allah the almighty said and do not follow the vain desires of people who went astray in times gone by so don't follow the desires, the vain desires of the people who went astray like people before us they used to put things in their own scriptures out of the desires. If they felt like something uh, something they want to do, they make it halal. If they felt like they didn't want to do something, so they made, they made, they made it uh, prohibit, prohibited. So the, that means the religious scriptures are being fabricated, fabricated concocted. amended, uh, things were taken out. And that's, that's again ideological desire. And then you have people, uh, uh, they, 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 f they followed their desires excessively. They went astray, as Quran says. And then they also misled other people because of their desires, because of their connection with their desires, and strayed themselves from the right path. So they went, uh, they went out of the correct path. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا أَهْوَاءَ قَوْمٍ قَدْ ضَلُّوا مِنْ قَبْلُوا وَأَضَلُوا كَثِيرًا وَضَلُوا عَنْ سَوَاءِ السَّبِيلِ We find that also, uh, before I forget, we find that tendency also in many religious people. So they say, there is a type of people that would say, whatever suits me or whatever is... It fits me. Mm. Then I would just take that. So they, they kind of, there are people who made a madhab actually. That That's th what I was coming to. Mm, that. Yeah. For example, we have seen people now, we have this division, unfortunately, that some people say, you know, that without going into details mm -hmm. about it, because obviously our today's topic is not that uh, subject. Like we would pick and choose from different madhab and suit our needs. Exactly. So they, they would say, uh, if, if this is... Um, something was right then first of all our predecessors they would have suggested salaf uh, salaf mm. but and also if people start like doing pick and choose like taking all the easy uh, masail easy rules and regulations from from all schools of thoughts then they would eventually they would lose the religion itself eventually <coughs> they would re lose and there are examples for that uh, there's no time for giving those examples there are many examples which suggests that if people start taking all the easy matters from all schools, then eventually they will make the religion very, uh, uh, they will take it to, to a level where it's going to be, uh, it may even like, um, it may, they may lose their religion. So therefore, even when it comes to religious matters, we are allowed to go for a stronger opinion if that's something proven to be stronger. However, we shouldn't go just because something that is easy for us. And I think the best practice should be as uh, the Sahaba and the Salaf al-Salihin have done, that uh, ask the people who are more knowledgeable. Exactly. Let's and not make our own judgment. Yes, and also if something that we think that we need and at times there can be uh, severe difficulties uh, to follow a specific rule or specific fatwa or, 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 or an opinion, in that case, we can go to the people of knowledge, and if they suggest, just the way GP sometimes can change the medication, just the way the doctors can change the prescription, similarly, a, a, a mufti, uh, someone who is uh, a knowledgeable or qualified scholar, can maybe suggest a different prescription for that person. Uh, but, but that but depends on circumstances, circ individual because obviously cases. Obviously, you look into the situation, mm -hmm. circumstances, because he knows, he knows uh, the adab or the manners of giving fatwas, uh, and not just that as he's going to pick and choose. Yeah, this is not something that's um, praiseworthy in and Islam. The other thing I want to know, you mentioned about the hawa. Is it the same hawa that Rasulullah in Surah Al-Nasr wa ma yantiqu an al hawa? Is it the same hawa? Yes, exactly. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he never follows his desires. Is that why it is mentioned? Yes. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. Whatever he says, whatever he does, or whatever he loves, recommends, all of them are wahy, are um, inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, whatever Prophet sallallahu said, he never spoke from himself uh, as the enemies of Islam. They said Prophet was, uh, was a liar. Or, the or he was uh, a magician. Majnoon. 
They made a lot of mm. false accusations against this great Which prophet. even in today's world, when we see an alim, when we see a scholar who is rightly known to be uh, a good scholar in his true academic form and practice, yet we see a lot of blame games are being spread around. Yes, that's right. One more verse regarding um, the uh, shahwa or, or, or shahwa, the desire. In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 59, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا So uh, what they did, uh, then there has succeeded them, uh, them uh, a generation who have given up, who given up the salah, who gave up the salah. Meaning they uh, lost the salah, they didn't pray on time, they didn't follow all the rules and regulations of salah, or maybe they didn't pray on time, so they lost and they they miss uh, they they treated salah insignificantly, and they have followed their lust, they have followed their desires, uh, the the excessive desires, which made them to be in the fire of hell. Again, desire, you see. Okay, now that's a very relevant subject. I would like to talk after the break about salah, the negligence that we have, even it's prevailing in our today's society. But inshallah, right. we'll discuss that after a short inshallah. break. Inshallah. My dear viewers, it's time for a short break. We have been discussing on our tonight's topic, which is human desires. Our guests have been talking on different forms of desires, uh, whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical, the different elements of desire and different types in Arabic terms have been clearly explained by the guests. Do stay in with, tune with us. We'll be inshallah right back after a short break. Wassalamu alaikum.